Hey, what's going on guys? Shane here back with Vince the Anomaly. What's up guys? And today we're talking about the fight that happened just the other weekend, Triple C, Henry Cejudo against Marlon Marias, fighting the bigger, stronger opponent. Uh, Vince is going to break down some of the strategies and things that you saw, so what are we going to talk about today? Yeah, in particular, you know, Cejudo turned that fight around, he was losing that first round bad, and he came back big. Prove that he's worthy of co being called the Triple C now, I guess that's what he's going with. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, one of the things I noticed was that straight right hand, but especially the knees from the clinch that really yeah. broke Marlon Marais down. So let's go ahead and check those knees out. We're gonna first cover how Henry Cejudo was landing these knees in the Thai clinch. I think it was a little bit different than your traditional Muay Thai style. It was. And it's actually, uh, it's very good for MMA. Just, it's a, it's a slight change in your hip positioning and how you're throwing your knee and shooting it through your opponent, you're gonna switch it up a little bit for MMA. It's a little bit safer, and it helps you avoid the wrestling of the other guy. So what Henry was doing here, when he had this grip over the top of the Shane, in traditional Muay Thai, you know, Shane obviously knows, you're whipping around and you're going through with the knees, and you're also shooting your hips up and through, and that's gonna give you the most power. And so anytime, whether it's a punch, hook, kicks, knees every time i shoot my hips through something that's going to add way more power yeah but what henry was doing was he kind of had marlon over here and he was bringing his knee up but he was still keeping his hips back now there are a couple different advantages to doing so the biggest one especially for mma is obviously this guy can wrestle as well so if i have this clinch and i bring my hip through it's easy for shane to kind of just run through me and trip me run through with that double leg and get me down to the ground. Obviously, we don't want that happening. So what Henry was doing here was he was keeping his hips back, still throwing with power, but he was just bringing the knees up like this. So my hips are back. That's a, a lot different than shooting my hips through where my opponent can grab the knee and just run me down because I've thrown so much of my weight forward. Now, the other advantage to doing that as well, especially in MMA, is that they're slightly faster, okay? So I'm sacrificing some of that power, I would say maybe 10, 15%, but I can land a few of these knees right away, and Shane's not gonna have that much time to react, to block, to start to work out of the clinch. So let's demonstrate these knees from the clinch, the way Henry Cejudo was doing it, this hips back. Yeah. If it's MMA and Shane's trying to shoot in from here, my hips are back, Shane shoots. Even if he gets under my arms, guys, my hips are back, so I can start sprawling on top of him, right? Show that one one more time. I get that clinch. I'm throwing these knees with the hips back. I'm not overextending my hips. Shane gets under, and I can immediately sprawl back on top of Shane. Now, another thing that can happen is if you have proper control here, you guys are using these elbows, digging into these collarbones, you're controlling Shane. If he does try to drop and shoot in, my hips are back. I'm just going to tilt him to the side. So I'm using my elbows to redirect. I'm yeah. pulling down the head using the elbows to redirect. Yeah, if you have a good enough clamp down, it's, it's super uncomfortable for me, and you should be able to keep the range, the distance from closing my arms to your legs. Exactly. Yeah, so I guess a little bit different than Muay Thai would be, yeah. I don't want to lower my level because I'm getting asking to get knee in the face. So it's, it's hips in, or mm -hmm. the first thing, and then I want to cross face, take this arm, push across so I can create a little bit of space. Now I can scoot this arm through. What I like doing is go to the bicep and just break this grip here. Mm -hmm. Now from here, we're in the same position. We're in a 50-50 clinch and I can work from there. But I know when he tried to fight, he tried to cross face. Yeah, as soon as Marlon started trying to defend that way, so he's fighting the hands, fighting the clinch up here, as, as you should be doing, right? Not getting knee in the head. Yeah. Then Henry can just disengage. Right. And now he can pop right back in with that right straight and get the clinch again, or he'll just disengage and stay in this mid-range game and keep the pressure on Marlon. The pressure really started getting to him. You see it, whether it's the cardio, with a combination of those knees getting blasted into your yeah, midsection, yeah. It, it all adds up there. But those entries were great from yeah. Henry Cejudo using that right hand. So let's take a look at, at some of those. One of the things that I really appreciated was just kind of what Cejudo did to enter into that position. Yeah. He wasn't just walking up and grabbing Marlon by the head. No, Marlon, Marlon was blasting those round kicks yeah. in round one, keeping him at his range where he wanted to be. Yeah, I was really impressed with that. Well, I don't want to take it away from you, but the right hand that he was <laughs> yeah, using. Yeah, the entries, exactly. Yeah. So the right hand there was, I think that was the game changer. So yeah. Henry was obviously getting tagged up in the legs the whole first round. The second round he came up, and I think after the fight too, he told his coaches like, hey, we need to make this a dog fight. We yeah. need to step in there. He needs to step into that zone where it's more of that mid-range, that boxing range. And that's exactly what he did. And he started landing the right straight a lot. So whether he was just here and launching it in, 
whether he was exploding off of his back leg using that powerful wrestling explosion to cover a lot of distance or sometimes as Shane mentioned to me earlier as well he was just right here and popping that run straight right in really fast so not really loading up at all and catching him kind of off cadence so sometimes when you guys are working here with your partners when you guys are sparring or fighting you notice we're right here oh there's some tension if I back up a little bit there's that slight relaxation of the hands oh nothing's coming I can relax a little bit yeah. and now that's the perfect time to throw in and Henry actually did this a lot during the fight yeah so he was using that straight hand to land Marlon started getting worried about that hand next he was using that to enter into his clinch where he started working the body with the knees so he would throw that right hand and right off of the hand he would just reach around and control the back of the head and then immediately start bringing up those fast knees sometimes he'd go to the head sometimes he would just go to the body but he was launching them in pretty quickly so he got uh, Marlon with a barrage of those knees and obviously every time you get hit to the body exactly that energy bar just starts going <laughs> lower and lower and lower and that's what happened yeah that's exactly what happened so strategically you know that's just again it's a championship level performance right there to get beat up on the outside like that to know you have to turn into a dog fight to step into that mid-range find something that's working in this case it was his right hand and then to utilize that right hand to enter into that clinch so yeah. whether it's that straight here, sometimes he did it off the uppercut where he'd yeah. throw, yeah. and now he's already in range because he exploded into this mid-range here, stepping into close range and clinch range where he can land those knees. It was just brilliant all the way around from Henry Cejudo. So practice with your friends, guys. Those knees, instead of shooting your hips through, bring the fast knees up for MMA, and then you can practice your entries off of a straight right. You can enter off of the hook, yeah. mess around, enter off of the jab, throw that jab inside, and just reach around so you can get your grip. And yeah, remember, if you're in a fight, you're getting picked apart from the outside, be strategic, get in there, make it a dog fight, get into that clinch. All right guys, there you have it. So the clinch in MMA, especially when you're trying to work that Muay Thai clinch, is gonna be a little bit different from the traditional style because of the takedown. So your hips are gonna be back a little bit more. There's gonna be a slight variation to how you throw the actual knees, but mess around with it in your training. And then also the entries into the clinch, you can try this right hand straight, the, the uppercut, bunch of different ways to enter the clinch and then once you're there just just switch it up try different different ways of throwing it uh, until next time be sure to subscribe to get the fight tips before your opponent does and click the link in the description below for Vince's Instagram please follow and support this man he's going places you want to hop aboard the, the train now until then I'm Shane Vince the anomaly fight tips for the underdogs